In this video, we'll be making a sprite sheet to use in Spark AR Studio. We'll start by making the animation and creating the sprite sheet in Adobe After Effects, giving it a little tweak and crunching it down in Photoshop before sending it over to Spark. Sprite sheet is an image that consists of several smaller images, which are called sprites. Combining the small images into one big image can improve performance and it reduces the memory usage. But because the maximum texture size you can import into Spark is 1024 by 1024, they're only really useful for making small elements or things that you plan on tiling. In order to fill up your sheet and use all available space, it's best to use a square number for the amount of frames. So generally, your sprite sheet should be made from either 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, or 100 frames, and so on, and so on. The size of your sprite sheet needs to be a power of two, but let's just keep this simple for now and stick with square numbers. If you don't use a square number, you'll still be able to import your sprite sheet, but you won't be able to tile it if you were looking to use that feature. To build my sprite sheet, I'll set up the comp here in After Effects. If you already have an animation or you want to build something completely different, then just skip ahead to the sprite sheet building section. I'll put up some sort of link to that now. Okay, so composition, new composition. I'm setting this up at 1024 by 1024. I'll call it Sprite Anim. Uh, I'm just working in 25 frames, but that's fine. And my duration is going to be one second, so 25 frames. 5 by 5 equals 25. Uh, okay, that. And I'm just, I'll put in a new solid layer, new solid. And I'll just make, that, make sure this comp size doesn't matter about the color because it's going to get replaced. And I should just point out, I am working in frames in my timeline. Over here, you can uh, switch between uh, minutes and seconds or uh, frames. So it's much easier to work in frames for this sort of thing. And I'm going to start by adding in a effect called radio waves. So you just come up here and just search radio and then double click. And what that does is it generates this. But I want uh, my effect to already be there and so, so I need to just click and drag my layer across I go to the end and then option right square bracket just to bring the end point back in let's just keep I'll just drag that right along so that it's gonna be there yep there, there we go let's just have a look so it's already got that perfect loop happening few of the settings I'm going to tweak will be let's twirl down their polygon and then turn the sides to three I want the frequency to be two and the expansion to be ten have a look how that's looking okay a few other things I want to change the I'll put a bit of spin in let's make that ten Okay, all right. And I can put a bit of curviness in. I'm just gonna tweak these. Okay, so let's go with 0.4 in the curviness and let's go 0.4 in the curvy size. Okay, I like it. The other thing I'm going to add is a kaleidoscope, okay, a, yeah, CC Collider. If you just search up there and then just double click, make sure your layer is selected, double click. All right, and the settings we want to change in this, we want the size to be 100 because I don't want it to be tiled because we're going to be tiling that ourselves. And then I'll change the mirroring to be stylish. Let's see how that goes. All right, that works all right for this, for what we're doing. This is just quick and simple. I'm going to add another layer. Well, that's just, uh, yeah, that I'm happy with that color. I'm gonna add, so I'm just gonna click on my layer. Uh, Command D or Control D to duplicate. So that's another layer with the exact same settings. I'll just tweak a few of these settings. Um, let's give it four sides. Let's change the color to be more of a lighter blue. 
And let's change the mirroring to be flip-flop. Just have a look at a few of them. Yeah, okay, that, that, I like that better. Flower, all right, so there's our basic animation. It is set up, uh, it will have an alpha channel. So these colors here, you can either use the colors once you've put them into Spark, or you can just use it as an alpha channel and choose, or even um, you can set up a patch to have the, the color be dynamic within Spark. So I will, I will set up both. To export out the sprite sheet, we need to just drop it into a new comp. So grab your animation, drop it into a new comp. I'm just gonna rename that comp to be export, underscore export. The script I'll be using to generate the sprite sheet is called Sheeta, available from aescripts.com. Uh, it is a name your own price script. Um, the displayed amount is only a suggested amount. But once you have downloaded that script and then you just place that into your uh, application directory and then scripts, scripts, UI panels, and then that uh, script is just placed in there and then the application is restarted. And now we will be using the script called Sheeta. So just window Sheeta. And all we need to do is we just need to click set up for animation and then save sprite sheet. And now I will save that out. You don't need these extra names on the end of it. Just get rid of that for now. So just call that export and then save. This is the exported sprite sheet out of After Effects into Photoshop. Um, I like to resize it in uh, in Photoshop rather than in, uh, After Effects. So you'll see if 5120, it's way too big. So I'm gonna resize that down. So I've just gone image, image size, and then 1024, because that's the maximum we can have. Uh, 1024. And then just okay that. Now we'll just chuck a background in here so we can have a, actually have a look at what's going on. Just got a solid color. I will delete this so it doesn't matter now too much. Now it's making it a bit darker. So a sprite sheet has come out five by five, 25. So this is exactly what I want. That is all good. And now I like to recompress this out of here. And the, um, the way I like to do that is just with file, export, export as, and choose PNG to keep that alpha channel, but I choose smaller file, 8-bit file will drop the uh, file size considerably, so that's not better. So that's one of the main reasons why I like to bring it into Photoshop rather than go straight from After Effects. And now we can export that out. Now just, I can just write back over that file. Blank project here in Spark. I'll just import my sprite sheet. I'll go down to add asset animation sequence. I'll call this my very original name, sprite sheet. And then we wanna come up here to the settings and under texture, I wanna choose new image texture. I need to find my sprite sheet. There it is, open. It will bring that in. I will just click on that straight away and then just click no compression just to speed things up a bit. And while I've got that selected, so I've selected the sprite sheet there and it just puts in the sort of default settings. I just need to change that to five by five equals 25. And while I've got this selected, I will just scroll down and then in the U tiling mode and in the V tiling mode, I will change them both to repeat. And add in a new object. Let's add in a rectangle. And click in the size, fill width and fill height and I can put in a new material. We'll call this right Anim. And then in the texture on that material, I just choose my sprite sheet animation. 
and there it is. But it's coming a bit weird. It's because it's stretching it. So then I've got the tiling options here that I can now tweak to get that how I want it to be. Try and make it roughly square. There we go. So I made that a five by nine. And that is the basics of how to bring in a uh, sprite sheet from After Effects into Spark. Um, while I've got this here, I will just add in, uh, I'll duplicate my rectangle. And I'll go to camera and extract the texture and extract the segmentation. And then on that second rectangle, go to the material, create new material. This will be person, so just rename person. In the texture, I will choose camera texture. And then in the alpha, I will select it and choose person segmentation. And there we go. So one of the other things that we can do while this is here, if I just go to my sprite anim, I can change that color. Let's choose a red. And I can take that texture out of there and I can put that in to the alpha. And now that is using the sprite sheet as the alpha channel and then you can tweak those colors. So yeah, sprite sheets are not only useful for actually creating textures, but also for creating alpha channels. And there we have it. So exporting a, a sprite sheet from After Effects and into Spark AR.